announcement that you will be fighting next week at combat zone uh kind of in your backyard and basically your home your promotion man how you feel about it and talk about how this uh matchup came about yeah i, I love it man i love fighting for combat zone calvin's promotion and the best venue i could possibly fight at is the one right in manchester i fought in there the most i'm the most comfortable in that cage and it's like being at home it's honestly right in my backyard but, yeah, late announcement on the fight, but we've been in fight camp. I've been planning a bit on this card for the past eight weeks. Um, you know, we had some opponents, and then, hey, nays, hey, but, uh, and so, yeah, we got we got Lionel Young here, and even though it is two weeks, uh, I've been training the whole camp for this. So, we're ripping, we're roaring, and uh, we're ready to go. Well, as I mentioned, you did have a fight that uh, fell through uh, in May. It was uh, CES 73. Uh, what was there? What was uh, what was the issue there that that fight didn't happen? Yeah, so that that one that we ever since coming off of the layoff, we moved up to 55. Even my fight before that was at 55. So I was ready to go back down to 45. Had some weight cut complications, everything, because I had gained a decent amount of weight coming down. That when I was trying to go back down to 45, my body just said no. So uh, I tried making an agreement. You know, I own that one. That one's on me. Uh, you know, if I, if I do wrong, I'll take it. We tried making some agreements for different weights, a catch weight, and we just couldn't come to an agreement. So it got scrapped. Uh, well, this fight heading in on the 26th, that is a, a lightweight bout. Is there a catch weight at something? 155, lightweight belt. All right, my man. Well, um, you know, that's a comfortable weight for you, even though you want to be at that 145 when the big show calls. Uh, 155, you've definitely produced at that uh, that weight class. Um, you know, before we get to this matchup with Lionel, big opportunity, you know, to get another win under your belt there. Uh, you know, you were on that uh, looking for a fight back in March at um, Combat Zone uh, 79. And, yep. you know, the the... the the show just came out, edited version, all this other stuff. You know, you and I interviewed after that on the, the live podcast. And then, you know, uh, little clips come out here now. And, you know, looking at the show, we know that Yuri and um, Mr. Matthews got, you know, a chance to fight in front of Dana. Are, yeah. you, are you a little disappointed uh, from your showing that you didn't get a, an opportunity? Or do you think there's still time for that opportunity uh, before the, you know, the season ends here? Yeah, I still believe there's opportunity for me to get a contender series. They wanted me a few years ago before I took my first loss. Um, I'm just the type of guy where you can call me on, you know, two months notice or two days notice contender series. I'm going to make an exciting event. But, yeah, I was a little disappointed that I didn't get the call. Um, honestly, I think I was one of the two finishes of the night. But as far as Yuri and Connor, I'm so freaking proud of those guys. They went out there, they performed, and I am so happy they're getting that opportunity. Those guys absolutely deserve it. Um, but, you know, coming off uh, the, the almost two-year layoff, and that was my first fight, I understand, man. But, you know, that's coming off two years fighting a top guy around here. So after this next performance, there's no denying me after that. And like I said, I'm super proud of Yuri, super proud of Connor. They deserve it. And um, But like you just said, you know, after a few years off, it's the first fight coming back. I'm not disappointed. No lack of motivation. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. But, like, as far as, like, in myself in the fight, two years off, came down, smashed the top guy. Uh, you know, even when the motivation, you know, goes away, I'm disciplined. Um, I have a whole new fire in me, and, it, you know, it, it's burning hot and blue, and I don't rely on motivation no more. I rely on discipline. I know what I have to do to get where I want to go. So uh, right after that, I was like, oh, oh well, uh, you know, whether I go contender series, whether they call me short notice, late notice, I'm going to keep just smashing dudes local, and eventually I'm going to be undeniable. Well, here's another dude to get a chance at smashing. Uh, it is Lionel Boogs Young. Um, you know, the dude has been around for some time, and he will fight anyone. He goes between a couple of weight classes. He's always game for a fight. You mentioned that, you know, there might have been some other names there or some things didn't work out. You said, you know, you've had your name in there and looking for a matchup for a few weeks now. Um, was there, you know, was there anything that was kind of set, like a matchup? And then it fell through, or it was just nothing came about until Lionel came around? 
Yeah, nothing came really came about. There were some names tossed in and out. We thought we had some uh, Georgian kid that uh, well, in Vegas now. We thought we had him, and then the, you know the date didn't work out for their team. Uh, that was a fight I was looking for a little bit more because he was more experienced, um, you know, a little bit of a tougher opponent. But at the level I'm at right now, it, it's kind of hard. There's a lot of guys in New England that are like this. It's the up and comers aren't going to want to fight you. And the guys that are kind of up there, they're not going to fight you because it, it's a threat on the record, you know? So I'm kind of in like that no man's land right now. So when Lionel took the fight, I know he's game. I know he's a dog. That guy fights at 35, 45, and now 55. So, you know, he's a veteran. He's a journeyman. Um, I- I'm going to go through and just blitz through him, but that's not to say I don't have absolute respect for that guy. He shows up at weigh-ins, he gets in your face, and he carries that same energy the next day at the fight. He's stepping forward. So, you know, I'm super happy that he accepted that fight. Well, uh, a really known fact uh, on Lionel's side is that he likes to fight the cartel. He likes to fight some Lozon guys. He likes to spoil the party or try to. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to call you a prospect because you are, you know, on the doorstep of uh, that that uh, UFC contract. But um, he likes the, the up and comers. He likes to take them out and, uh, you know, spoil the party. Um, you know, going into this fight, is there, you know, you said you're going to go through him, but what do you have to watch out for Lionel? I mean, he's been around a long time, just fought Jay Perrin, went the distance with him, not much, you know, striking going on there, but looking at Lionel, Lionel's a guy that likes to kind of strike, and, you know, unless you take him down and, and want to grapple, but he likes to stay on his feet a lot. Yeah, I, I've studied this film. Every guy I fight, I like to study them pretty extensively just to see what their tells are, what they're doing, you know, what they what they bite on, what they don't. But watching those last few fights, obviously he's been around for a while. And even if a guy has a two and five record, you got to respect him when you go in there because everyone has a puncher's prayer. You know, if you get cocky, you go in there. We've seen on the local venues, guys that are supposed to clean someone right out and they get caught with a shot because they're being cocky. But as far as Lionel, I'm going to keep the distance with him. Um, and I'm just going to walk him down and it, it's striking from there. You're not going to see a takedown coming out of me against him. I can wrestle if I choose to. I'm not going to. If he tries to shoot on me, he's just going to get stuffed, and I'm going to tell him, you know, this is my cage right now, and you're going to stand in front of me. We're going to swing. But as always, I respect him. He's been around. You know, he has a few submission wins throughout the years. You know, he grabs people's necks. But, uh, you know, my neck's not up for sale. I'm not shooting on this guy. But, yeah, just the all-around danger is everyone's got a puncher's prayer. He's very comfortable, and he's very experienced. So I'm going to go out there, and even though I say I'm going to run through him, I take him dead seriously. Well, my friend, uh, you know, you're fighting at 155 here. Uh, I take Lionel out. Um, you know, where, I mean, you'll be in two weight classes, 145, 155. Where, I mean, there's been a couple of double champs here recently. Where do you think you sit? Uh, let's first say one, at 145, and where do you think you sit at uh, 155 with a victory uh, next Saturday night? So 145 and 155, I'll, I'll be going back down to 145, especially once we get to the big leagues. Um, just being able to, I'm a big 145er, the average size 55er. Locally, just being able to flow between those two weight classes gives me more opportunities for opponents. But once once I go in here and I get this W, Honestly, 107%, and, and I stand by it fully. I'm the best 145 or 155 or in New England, without a doubt. I know there's a lot of other great guys there. It's not shitting on any of them. But, you know, I'm here, and I'm here to win, and I believe in myself fully. Excellent, my man. Well, uh, bro, congratulations, man. Uh, glad to see you back in there. Uh, you know, try to get them wins under your belt to, you know, say, Dana, come on, let's go, man. So uh, with that said, man, um, what do we expect to see from the kid Marat on uh, Combat Zone 81 on August 26th? Walking forward, man, first round finish. I'm going in there for the kill. I'm not going to touch around and point fight. You know me, that's not my style. I go in there, I pressure people, and the second I see the big shots, I take it. Once I hit dudes, man, it's a whole different ball game. Their head gets all fuzz, and I go for the kill, the kill quick. So, uh, you know, stay on your feet, be ready, and uh, I think we're going to get our first, you know, snooze and knockout. I'm going to leave him laying there. Excellent, my man. Well, bro, uh, again, congratulations. Uh, we'll be uh, checking that out next Saturday. I do uh, hope, uh, hopefully I will be there. Uh, I would love to see it. I uh, love the, the venue, 
And uh, oh, yeah. you, I can't wait for the crowd, man, because you are home. Like, uh, you know, that last fight, Dana White, that was in a bigger place. But this is where you uh, you actually have the roof blown off the place uh, at the double I'm, tree. So. I have a huge fan, my <laughs> fan base, my family. It's within 45 minutes of everyone. So you'll definitely hear the house getting loud. Excellent. I mean, uh, social media sponsors, thank yous, anything you want to say before I let you go. And uh, we'll see you in a, in a week, bro. Yeah, thank you as always to, uh, you know, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my team, um, Top Game Management, Tyson, New England Cartel, all my training partners, uh, my family, and everyone that's really just been a part of this camp, you know. it. You know, we may go in that cage alone, but it takes a village to raise the warrior, to raise the boy. But, uh, yeah, social media is just Brendan Marat on Instagram or Kid Marat all across all platforms. You can find me on there, Twitter, Instagram, the whole nine. Excellent, my man. Well, uh, bro, I love it coming out of the gate and, uh, you know, getting back in that cage and getting them wins under your belt, man. Uh, you're, you're, you're a huge, huge fighter in this, uh, area and we can't wait to see you, uh, you know, make the big show, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'm just here to, I'm happy to fight. I love the fight and, you know, most importantly, this is an entertainment sport. So as long as I can keep the crowd entertained, man, I'm happy.